so today we're going to talk about love. Love of self, love of neighborhood, and what, like, you know, what does love mean to you? Um, hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Marilyn Hernandez. The fact that you're how old right now? I'm 39. I'll be 40 in August. August what? August 9th. Do you have a child? I have one daughter. She's 20 years old. And how do you feel about her? There's no words to actually describe or say how I feel about my daughter. The, the love that I have for her, it's, it's infinity. It's, I can't even describe how much I love this woman. I had her a little bit young. I was in my teens. She, I was 19 when I had her. Um, I had her for my own reasons. Um, I did not feel in love in the home that I was growing up in. How many? How big is your family? Um, it's pretty average. Not for the American family, but pretty average for the Latin family. Um, five. Five of us, four brothers, and just me. Then my um, mom, my mom, and my dad. Uh, so why didn't you feel any love when you have such a big family? Like, what was lacking? What happened? My dad is not really. Um, he is my father. He is my dad. He's the man that raised me. You know, he. His expression of love is is putting clothes on your back and putting food in your belly and making sure that you had a roof over your head. So in his definition of love, I was loved. Uh, did I feel an emotional connection from him every time? No, I didn't. Um, did I feel like I was the stepchild? At times, lots of times. My mom, I don't know what her deal is with me. I guess she had me a little bit younger than when I had my daughter. Um, it was just very um, abusive from her. Lots of abuse, um, emotional abuse, some physical abuse. I think the worst part was the emotional abuse that I received from her. Well, growing up in my house, I really didn't love myself. I was the darkest. I was the fattest. And my problem, actually I wasn't the darkest. My dad is, but I was the fattest. Is there a problem being so dark? In a lion family, yes. I, not my family did this to me. I, I mean, my family did do this to me. Um, you know, my little brother made a, a remark when I was younger. You know, he was about 11 years old and I was 12. And he made the remark saying that, I can't quite remember what he said, but it was something about my skin color. And my mother heard him, and she slapped him across the face so hard that he never said anything ever again. And I never heard anything else about my skin color ever again. But why do you think there's like those perceptions about skin color, about light versus like dark? Light is definitely better in a Latin family. In a Latin family, light is definitely better. Hair is definitely better. You know, you have straight hair or curly hair. Brother Max, he had curly hair and he was light skinned. He was like the lightest out of all of us. Like, I used to say that he was adopted. Like, my, not even adopted. Like, my mom found him in the staircase and just brought him home. But with my grandmother, on my, my natural grandmother, on my father's side of the family, oh gosh, she had a problem with it. I had to stay there every weekend practically. Every weekend that she requested me or nagged my parents about it, about I don't come enough. 
and you know, it, it seemed like she loved me when she asked for me. But that weekend was pure hell. Why? When she would comb my hair. Oh, nobody has had this nappy in my side of the family. How come her, her hair is so nappy because of her mother's side? Oh, she's so dark. Nobody in my family is this dark. Everybody in her side of the family, her mother's side of the family is dark. Her father is a black. Like my grandfather on my mom's side, he's really dark skinned. And so my mom never knew this. And I just kept on going. I, I didn't say anything because you don't say anything. You know, you don't fight back. You don't argue. You don't speak back to your elders. You just take it. Like the only time I was fine with her and me is when my step-grandfather was there. Like he diffused the situation between me and her. Like he would make sure that she would stop talking. Like don't say that to her. She's just a child. You know, don't talk to her like that. She's just a kid. Don't do that to her. She's just a baby. Can't you see she's crying? Like she would yank my hair to get it as straight as possible. Why do you have a kid at, why did you have a kid at 19 years old? I had a kid at 19 years old because I didn't truly feel love and I was literally at the point of either I get pregnant and love my child and I would have someone love to love me. No matter what, that person would love me because it's your kid. And I was like, no matter what I was going through in my house, I knew that. I love my mom no matter what she did to me. And I knew that automatically my child would love me because she was my child, my daughter. So there's only two choices. I unscrewed the window guards in my bedroom window and we lived on a 30 second floor. My choices was either to get pregnant or to jump out the window. That's how I saw it. So having a baby was life in it was having a baby meant having a life while not having a baby means you would choose to just exit this world because you know society sometimes is just too difficult and especially like your family so as you're seeing your your two option is either life or death based on a baby how do you feel about MTV 16 and pregnant and the way like you had a child at 19 but they have a child at 16 and there's also like the media plays in it. So how do you feel about 16 and pregnant? Do you think it was life or death for those children? I don't think it was life and death for those children. I think at first, you know, it was an oops pregnancy. You know, not a mistake, but an oops. Like, oops, I didn't take the pill. Oops, the condom broke. Oops. You know, whatever their situation was, but I don't think their situation... Oh, tell me when you finish the sentence so I can actually interject a little bit. I don't think that their, 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 their pregnancy was um, do or die. I, but I think that that show now is ridiculous. Um. I like my neighborhood. I do not love my neighborhood. I see how my neighborhood gets treated differently than other neighborhoods downtown. And I just don't understand why the same money doesn't go into my neighborhood. I really do like my neighborhood. I really would not want to move out of my neighborhood. I think that with some changes, my neighborhood could be... My neighborhood is beautiful. It's just certain things that I realized that downtown has, like uptown doesn't have. Like they have spray cleaners that clean the sidewalks. Why don't we have spray cleaners that clean the sidewalks? As soon as their sidewalks just get cracked, someone comes in and fixes it after a few months. Ours is after a few years. And I mean years. Um, our stores, our bodegas are advertised with tape and it just looks ridiculous. Like. 
you know, I've practiced it getting fixed. But I think it could be so much better. I mean, it's beautiful out here. It's lush, it's green. And if you notice that some of our benches are redone and some of them are not. We have cracks on our ground. I was like, the pavement's just not nice. I think the, the neighborhood could, can use a little, I would say a little 20 more percent TLC. Not just from the city, but from the people as well that live there. Like they should have some respect for their streets, their buildings, their sidewalks.